Hi, this is Patrick from Motion VFX, and today I'm happy to be introducing M Event for DaVinci Resolve. M Event is a pack of over 140 different presets, perfect for any time you're creating an event or announcement video. To locate your M Event content, come to the effects library on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. M Event presets are spread across video transitions, titles, and effects. And in either category, open up Motion VFX and then go to M Event. Alternatively, you can also come back to Toolbox and then type in the search bar M Event. And here you can see all your different elements. There are 11 backgrounds presets, 19 drop zone effects, 14 logos titles, 15 add ons, 15 descriptions effects, 16 lineups, 14 lower thirds, 10 numbers presets. 23 titles, and then seven transitions. Now, some effects, including backgrounds, drop zones, and logos are stored as effects. And if I drag a clip onto my timeline real quick, we can start to see why. Even something like logos, which would normally be standalone titles, if we drag that onto our clip, we can see the logo pop up, but we'll also notice that this effect does influence the background video. So for these few events, including backgrounds, they are effects you need to drop directly on your clip, or you can use an adjustment clip, and we will talk more about that later. There are 144 different elements. It's one of the largest motion VFX packs we offer, and it's perfect for projects like big events, conferences, concerts, festivals, or anytime you desire clean professional graphics in your videos. Let's dive in by looking at the sample project we have mocked up. You can see on this first clip, we have a simple title, but we're gonna be looking at this transition. I can zoom in and we see this is M Event Transition 2. You can click on that and then when you open your inspector, you'll have just a small group of custom controls for these. As with all transitions, we do have these standard controls for length and alignment, but then we have custom options for this specific transition here. You can see on the background clip, this starts as color, but then quickly goes to black and white as the second clip comes in with this cross, spins around, then zooms in, and then finally we are back to color. And we can see as this color spins in, uh, it ends at this specific angle, but if we uncheck shape tilt, then when that spins in, it will stay more straight on, just a quick alternate option. And it does dip both of these to black and white, but if you want either of those to stay color, you have options for that as well. And that takes us right on to this next title. And here is a great opportunity to really go in depth with the custom controls offered. We can see coming out of this transition, uh, this circle completes, the text animates on, it looks really nice. And at the end, this specific title does fade out, but like with a few other titles in DaVinci Resolve, in this instance, it is because this title is shorter than the default five seconds. So even though as I'm about to get to, we do have these in and out animation checkboxes. In this instance, the title isn't long enough to need that out animation. So that checkbox won't have any meaningful effect, but this in checkbox, if I uncheck that, then the text will just pop right up. You could fade that or bring it in any other way, but with that in checkbox checked, and when I go back, we'll have that really nice text and circle transition come on. Underneath that, we do have our main content controls. These are your transform options. If you want to move this anywhere in frame, scale it down or up a little bit and do an overall rotation, even keeping things basic, you can have some interesting looks. I'm gonna double click each of those to reset. And underneath here, we have header controls. That will be this line of text, April 24th, 2023. If you want it or not, you have a master checkbox for that. Uh, then you have all these normal text controls, including what you can type in you want, if it's 2024 instead. And then your font, color, scale. You will notice this scales from this very specific point. So you are less at risk of scaling up over some of your other text. But of course, that does have its own position control as well. And even if you were to add a second line, that would push the text up instead. And then you could pull up this line spacing. You have options, but it tries to stay out of your way. Underneath header controls, we have title controls, which will be this main text for both design and then a subtitle underneath for meeting. If you want either of those, you can turn them on or off, change those same scaling controls mix up the text however you want, individual position settings, and then finally we have circle controls. This being the main design element in this title, if I scroll down, you can see of course you can turn it on and off, uh, you have position, you have scale, and of course the actual color itself, especially if you are running an event uh, with a set design or a set color scheme, 
you can make any of these titles perfectly match what you're running with. All of these custom controls ready for you to customize. And of course, don't forget, right at the top of these presets, we do have this M event by Motion VFX button. Clicking this button will take you to motionvfx.com where you can find more information on any of our host of DaVinci Resolve presets or presets uh, for other software. Always good to check back in, make sure you haven't missed any of our new releases. Moving on, we're going to completely recreate one scene with multiple graphics on top of each other. We're gonna look at this scene. We can see we have a schedule that moves through pretty quick. We have this graphic down in the corner and then we have also a live recording or streaming bug up here. And then they all transition out and we're on to the next scene. But all of these graphics is what we're gonna look at. So let's completely start from scratch. I will clear out those titles. And then I can open up my effects library, uh, drag them back in and start from scratch. I have M event in my search bar, so I can come right down to lineups to start off with. I'm grabbing lineup seven. I'm gonna drag that, and I'm actually dragging this in an empty track uh, before the uh, end placement of these titles, because I want to line this up, and then we're actually gonna pull in the end of that clip. If I were to drag this right into this gap, it would overwrite the next clip, so I can bring that down. And we're gonna go ahead and close that effects library. Uh, we'll work on these uh, effects on just like a one-on-one -on -one basis. So I can open up my inspector with that lineup selected and start customizing this. The first thing I'm gonna do is scale it down just a little bit and slide it all the way over here to the right. And then like we showed off before, we have all of these different uh, customization options we can make. Especially if this is a live event, these times will be really important. I'll pull this up quite a bit more. And I'll leave these times where they are to demonstrate, but we can go in and change these specific text entries for what's going on during that time. So entry one, instead of introduction, this will be tools and technology. And I might even scale it up just a hair, uh, maybe make this a little bolder as well so it sticks out. But then we can move on to entry two, um, which we will change to artistry in movies and I will pull those same changes over that scale and then making this bold as well and then finally entry three then we can come down to our entry three here change this to post production today and make those same changes both to size and that font keep it all uniform and we're doing pretty good Moving on from that, I'll open my effects library and we are going to grab add-on 13, go through the same process we went through earlier, uh, giving this time. I'm also uh, pressing N to turn on snapping for when I drag these edges in, bring it in. This is this nice little live bug here and as you can see it comes on and then has this blinking dot there. We can move this with our content controls over to this upper left-hand corner, looking really nice up there. And this is simple, you can keep it simple, uh, but an important control to note on this preset is in add-on controls, we have this badge gradient. I could toggle that on, and instead of that white background, we can bring in any color, which will naturally fade between these two. Uh, on this gradient, select either of these points to change up that color, or you could even click on this gradient to add another point in the middle, and then it can rotate between multiple colors. And of course, you have that blinking dot which you can always change the color of as well. I do really like that default, so I will just head back to that. That looks great, and we can move on. Now, the final element we are adding to this scene will be a graphic down here in the corner, but that will actually uh, use the system we mentioned earlier, adjustment clips. Adjustment clips are stored in the main effects library. Uh, I will get rid of my M event search query here, pull in an adjustment clip, and adjust that with snapping to fit our clip and that will be good. By itself, nothing happens. But if I uh, go back to my toolbox and search for M event, we are coming down to logos. I am grabbing logo 10 and I am dropping it on the adjustment clip this time. And you see a few different things happen. All of these logo presets and the other ones we mentioned earlier have the ability to affect the background. If you drop them right on a clip, they will affect that clip and bring in graphics over it. Or if you use an adjustment clip, it will affect everything on all the tracks below that adjustment clip. But then with the adjustment clip uh, selected, we can make sure our inspectors open, come over to effects and look at all of these new custom controls. We always have the same content controls. So here I can scale this down a bit to 
drop it down into that corner. And here, instead of instead of being graphic about the event, we're gonna make this specifically about the people that are talking, but you might've noticed by default, we can no longer see who is talking. So I'm gonna jump ahead all the way down to the bottom of this list to blur controls and just uncheck that blur. Depending on what kind of graphic you're using or how you are using it in your video, it can be really helpful to blur out the background to just draw attention to your logo. Uh, but with this specific scene, we don't need that blur. But then with that out of the way, we can open up those title controls change this over to graphic flow team like these are the people giving this presentation and change our subtitle as well to special effects studio in miami florida that's looking great i'll probably also scale down this overall graphic a bit slide it back over and now we only have one major thing to deal with and that is this empty your logo spot this is our main uh, logo placeholder image but of course you can drop any specific logo or graphic you want in here and that is done in the inspector under these logo controls by default this logo will be empty but you can click browse that will pull up a finder window and you can navigate to any specific logo you would like substitute that right in and of course you have separate uh, position scale and rotation controls for whatever image you bring in now the last thing we have to think about on this scene is uh remember because we shorten these clips transitioning out of some of these clips if i just start to scrub we'll see that this adjustment clip will fully animate out because it is a little more dynamic based on that adjustment clips. And this lineups does a pretty good job as well. Uh, but this add on that bug doesn't have full time to animate out. So I can just pull these little handles on the end of the clip. I'll do this for this lineup uh, just so it fades at uh, about the same time. And now as this clip comes out, those perfectly fade out as some stuff starts to happen in the background into our next scene. And that is what we are gonna talk about next. We have a number of really interesting things happening in this scene. And the first actually happens as this previous scene starts to fade out. We have this spinning cross here and you'll see uh, that's not on a title, but instead that's happening on this background image itself. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come forward and I'm actually going to just disable both of these clips. So you can actually, you know what? I'll disable those titles as well. So we have just this background and then it starts to fade to this blue and this cross comes in. And that is happening because you see we have a cut on this background clip. We have made uh, the second part of that a compound clip. And on that, we have a dragged M event background 04. So let's do that. I'm actually going to just decompose in place using clips that will get us back to our source clip here. And then we'll just run through that same process. I'm going to right click, make a new compound clip. Some of the time, this is a very important step for some of uh, the specific timing in these presets and generally keeping things clean. It will do some other things like match the clip resolution to your timeline if there's ever a mismatch. But after there, I can come up to effects and in my effects M event, I can even open this up. We are grabbing a background. I'm grabbing a background 04, dragging it right to that compound clip. And you can see that does a whole lot of the work for us where now it will automatically start to fade to that background. That will stay in place very nice. And we will see it start to transition out. We don't want that. So I can come right over to effects, check that out. And then now uh, when this is done, the scene will just straight cut away. Always good to have that variety, uh, some cleaner transitions, some straight cuts, keeps energy up. And now we can look at these extra graphics we have going on. And you can see some of what's happening. You see, we have two different clips here and each of them is starting as just a video of these speakers. And then uh, they're being uh, slid over. Uh, they're being cropped a bit. We add text, looks great. Let's talk about how to get it done. I'm gonna disable the second graphic for now. Just look at the first. The process will be identical for getting that one set up, but we can just look at this one first for now. Uh, and if I go over to effects, you'll see this is drop zone 15. So what we're gonna do, I'm just going to straight delete that. And now we have this video clip. You can see on the video tab that we actually use these controls uh, to scale this just a bit and move the position over as well. You can always balance between uh, these master transform controls on the clip level before you get any fusion effects on that. But with that clip selected, I can open up my media pool and we are coming to effects, drop zones in M event and drop zone 15. I'm dragging that right on the clip. And now if I move over to effects, you can see some of what's going on. 
again, master uh, content controls to slide this over to the edge. But we see we also need to change the position of the speaker inside this mask. So that will happen in drop zone controls. Now, importantly, uh, this effect uh, will default to this video drop zone. When you drag it on a video clip or even a still image on your scene, it will take that, uh, put it inside this box. But if you want to, you can always kick this right over to photo and use that same browse menu we talked earlier, uh, if you're just talking about uh, still photo. But for now, we want video and we want to change this inner position to slide this speaker over. You can probably scale down it a little bit, uh, really show them off. That can be great. And then it's just that extra text customization, which in this instance is this title being motion design lecture. And this will not be Robert, but instead Julia with their title being art director. And just like that, we have taken a full frame video and turned it into this really nice graphic with this extra text. We can bring on that second one to complement it. Looks really great. And going back to these drop down controls, uh, for effects that will only take one video stream in, you can drop this right on the clip. Again, you can always turn that into a compound clip as well. Some of these other drop zone effects, like over here we have drop zone seven, that leverages a really powerful uh, process called fusion clips. When you right click on a clip on your timeline, you can make it a compound clip or you can make it a fusion clip. So let me demonstrate. I'll just jump to a blank spot on my timeline. I'll just pull in three clips here. Uh, all from the same event, but trim those to be the same. First, I am jumping right into these, changing these scalings over to fill, just so we don't have to worry about any uh, weird edges here. But now I can select all three of those, right click, make that a fusion clip. It will sum those to one track, but now if we drop on drop zone seven, it recognizes each of those video clips and it gives us control over those in one master effect. In this instance, all these drop down controls, uh, we have three different versions all pulling in video. You can change all of those independently, not just position, but like inside position and zooming and lots of other things. Really, really powerful feature inside these drop zone effects. As you've seen, M Event has over 140 different presets, and this opens up so many possibilities. Especially if you're new to DaVinci Resolve and you really want to fill up that effects library with powerful transitions, titles, and effect, M Event is a really solid choice. For more information on M Event or any of our other packs, visit motionvfx.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any future releases. And let us know in the comments what sort of event, conference, or festival you would love to use M Event to help promote. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.